Hello there and welcome to my YouTube channel, Julia McNeil Crafts. So it's time for Dawn and Julia Create. Woohoo! It's I was going to say it's our favourite time of the month, but to be honest, it's favourite time of the fortnight. That doesn't sound quite the same, but it's, it's now a fortnightly thing. And it's my turn to do the challenge this time, and I have challenged us to make an MDF hat. So this is the steampunk version. We have had a Alice in Wonderland version too. I'll show you that. So that's that's my steampunk version and that's my Alice in Wonderland version so I've got a video for this one somewhere and um, I don't have a video for this one because I made this at my in-laws actually when I was needing to design the packaging and the reason I'm showing you is I don't have a packaged hat set um, but on the packaging <laughs> is a picture of this so um, I'm sure Dawn will show you how it all comes the trouble is mine is in bits and pieces I've sort of got all the elements but not in a full kit like you would get so I decided that for this month's challenge this week's challenge that we should both make a hat so we are going to do that now now I have this was one of the first things I brought out and I was so excited by the concept of it you should have a teapot as well somewhere so it's basically to make a tea party. Right, I'm going to explain this bit first before I start waffling because this bit is probably quite important. I do find it easier to assemble the table first. This is built so snugly that there is not much room for manoeuvre. In fact, it's so... there we go. Right, once you get it, if it's not going in properly it's because you've not got it at the right angle. Okay. Sam that makes these designs them so well so if you I'm planning on painting mine I think in the last demo I did I covered it in paper and that's the only way I wouldn't build it first is if I was covering it in paper because painting it anything that kind of clogs up the holes just it makes it a bit more difficult and then once you've done got the table in so I've made a few of these up now and I've just found this is the easiest way once you've got the table in is then pop that into the slots there and then you've done all the construction part and as I said you don't need to glue or anything for this part because it just fits together so snugly so that's the hat made I'm going to pop the and then it's the same with the teapot and again if it doesn't seem to fit it's because one slots for the teapot and one slots for the cup and they have been made exactly so sorry it's kind of having to do this <laughs> this is the sort of thing that's a wee bit tricky um, to film because I need it at this angle to assemble it there we go right so that's it all slotted together now I can have it flat right because gel medium I'm seriously running out of gel medium but I'm meeting Lynette in I'm so excited I'm meeting Lynette and what day is it today? Today is very, very, very late Thursday night, like way, way past my bedtime. Um, and I'm meeting Lynette on Sunday night because we're both on the telly box on Monday. Um, and obviously she has a fabulous collection of mixed media project pod, products. So I'm going to be grabbing a um, gel medium of her, which is why I haven't gone out and bought one. Right, so... Um, I have delivered, I've just sort of automatically slotted it in there like that. To be honest, I would like to say it was designed like that, but the hat came first. Um, and I quite like to overlap things. So, I am going to get all of this stuck down first. And then I'm probably going to do some stenciling. I may actually even, I'm contemplating, I'm contemplating. It's a very, yes, right, I'm contemplating possibly just painting some of the top part with white gesso in order to be able to do a cool um, crackle gel trick. So again, I'm sort of deliberately slotting it into the table because I just think that works quite well. So the reason I wanted to get Dawn and I to do this is this was originally designed as part of my Curious Wonders collection and then um, Dawn got the kit and when she made it up on her channel, I'm sure actually if I ask her 
she could link to the original one that she did. I'll maybe ask her that. Um, that she did, took the Curious Wonder one but took it in a real steampunk direction. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, I want a steampunk one. And literally that is where the steampunk stories collection originated from. It was from Do seeing Dawn's hat. I was like, I want to do a steampunk one. This would be hilarious if it ends up looking exactly <laughs> like the last one. I'm trying not to, I'm not even like referring to it, but I feel like I'm sort of working on an autopilot. Yeah, so when I saw Dawn do her hat, then I immediately went away and drew the steampunk girls. And then once I'd drawn the steampunk girls, the rest sort of followed. But it was purely just because I wanted a steampunk hat. <laughs> so when people say that inspiration comes from various places, it really does. Right, I am contemplating because I think it would be quite cool. I'm just going to paint this top layer white with white gesso. The reason being, I'm going to do a really cool effect with Pretty Gets Gritty Crackle Gel. But what I have discovered is when I first tried to do it, um, it didn't work when I put it on a black background it kind of needs the white for it to stand out so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this white on first then I'm going to put the crackle gel on then I am going to paint over <laughs> everything black and then when I lift then I'll take the black paint off the areas with the crackle gel and you'll get this cool sort of vibrant look um, it's kind of difficult to explain, but we're doing the whole video as a process video, so we will see. We will see. I'm just taking all of this down into areas that I possibly could put the stencil. Probably just there. So I'll let that dry a little bit. While I'm doing that, I'm going to add some more of these embellishments. I'll probably save some to last as well, because I quite like having some in their true metal state, not just sort of gessoed, but I feel like... We need to put a few on at this stage just to build everything build everything up <laughs> so I'm trying to make it look almost mechanical let's see what else have we got probably got more cogs in the loft if I need them but okay Right, I'm going to leave it, maybe do I want, I'm just wondering if I want some down here. Yeah, I'll maybe put some down there as well. And um, I've still got a few to kind of keep in their proper metallic state. Yeah, so as I said, it seemed fitting to... Um, I want I want to do this as a oh, trouble is I'm gonna try and use my gesso now as gel medium and that's not gonna work work overly well. Yeah. So I felt um Dawn and I should do this, seeing as she alone is responsible for the whole steampunk stories collection. And it's funny because I love steampunk and I hadn't in a bazillion years thought about drawing it myself. Which is daft really, isn't it? But there you go. And you know when artists say inspiration comes from various things, it really does. Sometimes it can be really random where inspiration comes from but it does come right I'll just move that down yeah, like so I'm just going to pull my gel medium out of that a little bit okay so let's give this another little oh I knew I was going to do that right it's this one I want right let's give this another little coat probably should let it dry properly Give that another coat. So as I said, this will be going black at some point. But for this moment in time, I need it white. <laughs> All will be revealed. Okay, so let's pop that on. Now, an idea I had, and I don't even know if it will work or not. So, um, and I didn't have time to experiment. I'm just going to... Oh, I just realised. Oh, put these ones down. Packaging comes with corrugated card. Um, it comes like this. 
and I tend to like to use the corrugated card and I forgot to do that so we might have to add some of that on. Well, at least this is definitely going to look different to my original one now because I've kind of completely gone about it in a very different way. Last time the first thing I did was pop down the corrugated card but we will get some bits in in just a moment. Right I'm just going to card. See where I can put it. Actually, hmm. so this time it's going to be smaller pieces of it, <laughs> randomly dotted around. some on the base but I'll wait till the hat is upright before I do that so let's get a bit of gel medium on that so I'm just tucking that under there okay right so we've got that all tucked down there like so, so. I've just dried that and I'm going to pull in this stencil again because it's my favorite and I love it um, right, I'm going to just pop a bit of the yellow on first because these will blend a little bit. I've decided the yellow and the purple are probably going to make a more steampunky colour together than add in the fuchsia. Right, I'm going to get both of those on because I kind of want them to blend. And I am just going to... Ow. Metal gets hot when you heat it with a heat gun. <laughs> so be careful. Right, so I'm gonna get and this will do the most amazing honestly I love this stuff. I am absolutely addicted to crackle glaze. If you love mixed media and you don't have this in your life yet, you need it in your life, honestly. You get it and then you start thinking about what else can I crackle. So that's sort of not gone overly smoothly, but it'll add to the steampunk uh, texture. So that's all good. I'm just going to just scrape that off there so that we have it a bit more even and I'm just don't know if I can get down in there oops that would be my heat gun right this obviously I'm going on a really uneven surface it's going to be a really badly stenciled piece but yeah <laughs> there you go that is why you shouldn't do that but what we'll just do is that and it'll give some crackled texture so we are all good Right. Just remember that all artwork goes through an ugly phase. phase. Fully expect it. And especially with mixed media. See at this stage where you're throwing stuff down, nothing matches, nothing ties together, it just looks a big hot mess. You just have to kind of go with it. It's when you start to jess over it and then tie everything together with colour that it starts to make sense. Now just one more thing before I clear up for the day. I do have some of this lovely stuff which is marble texture paste listen wait it's just so unbelievably gritty i mean can you hear that it's just awesome so i'm going to add some of this loveliness in various places because this is really going to help with that sort of rusted rusted look things getting all oxidized and that fabulous patina effect we will be able to build that up beautifully with this stuff i've got so many mediums now it's beginning to stick to the paper so yeah just be aware of that as well right i'm gonna get some down in here as well so in my previous hat that I did. I didn't have this marble piece 
and I used um, the Nouveau Misses. I just sort of put it down. My colour there I wasn't overly fast on. And I just sort of put it down and um, patted it with my um, palette knife. And it just um, helped to add that texture and a similar effect. So just use what you have. The other thing as well is if you don't have anything like that, um, a gesso or a gel medium and if you stir in something like bicarbonate of soda or even like for this like a kinetic sand or something like that garden sand if it's like not obviously from your garden but like <laughs> if you've bought it and have it um, so just whatever you have available to be honest um, just use that so I'm going to just completely bring this texture up so I have it in loads of different places and really, as I said, this will all work together. And I've also noticed that my crackle gel's gone between the sort of edge of the hat. So I'm just going to go in there with my palette knife and get that off. Can you hear that? The crunch, crunch. It's awesome stuff. Right. I'm just going to go in there. Right. Um. Yeah. I think that may be us. I think what I will do is just put some more corrugated card across the base. Right, can you actually see? Yeah. Right, so I'm just going to put some more corrugated card along the base here. And I said, this is where you need to be patient with mixed media because I'm looking at it right now thinking it looks horrific. And quite frankly, it does. So um, never compare your start or your middle with somebody else's finish. I mean, that's true of everything in life, but especially when doing a mixed media project. Just don't compare yourself. Just keep going, keep going, work through the steps, work through the process. Even the people that you admire the most that do mixed media, they, they've gone through this process, they've gone through the ugly phase, and they've worked through it and come out with something beautiful at the end. So you just, you have to go with the flow. Right, so that's me. I'm going to probably just put a bit more of this um, marble paste just sort of in, in the corners down, down here. And bring this across a little bit again just to really build up this texture. It's such lovely stuff. Okay. Okay, so we have all of this going on. Oops. And what I'm going to do now is I am going to leave that to dry. Go and clean up all my stencils. And then I'll come back with you in the morning. And the first thing that we will do is paint that black. So for you it'll be a couple of seconds. For me it'll be tomorrow morning. Okay, so it's bright and early the next morning. I'm still in my PJs, look. <laughs> uh, but I'm just going to gesso this and then uh, get, get get back to you once I'm more organised. Right, so this is this all dry. Um, look at the, I don't know if you can see, can you see the crackle on that? Should I try and do a close-up? There you go, can you see that? It is epic i absolutely love this stuff it's so easy it's a one-step crackle and i've found in the past with one-step crackles that it's been all, more of an eggshell crack not like an absolute crackle crackle it's just fabulous what i'm going to do um, now is cover this little beauty with a black gesso and this is when it'll stop looking so random and start looking more like a finished piece so i'll just start this with you and then I will most likely pop you on fast forward so I would imagine that this is going to take a good three coats I would have thought so I'm using the pretty gets gritty um, black gesso and I'm just as I said I'm covering it um, all up we will bring the colour back of that um, soon, although I haven't quite decided. In my last one, I sort of went the normal patina colours, um, but I fancy going pink, but I'm not quite sure how that would work. But that's kind of in my head. I've got a real inclination to go very, very bright pink. So 
we will see what wins, in which case the yellow and the purple, well the purple might still work if I expose the purple parts, we will see. Right, so as I said, there's not much more to say about this, um, it's just literally covering everything in gesso. So I tend to do like a combination of sort of stroking the paint on like this and then when you've got textured areas you sort of have to give it a bit of a dab and a, a wriggle so that the bristles get right down and cover absolutely everything. So I'm just going to keep going with this and I'll come back to you once this is all covered and all dry. Okay, so that's us all gessoed up and now. I'm just going to add some Dina Wakely gloss sprays. Now, you are supposed to ensure that you clean the nozzles. And I'm not sure, and I thought I had done that well, but not overly well. Right, I'm going to put some pink down. Uh, now, what's particularly cool about these is they blend beautifully together. Yeah. I've definitely done something to the nozzle there. I have tried to give them a quick clean, but I think I'm actually going to have to pull them apart and clean them. Um, is the absorb into non-porous surfaces. Um, but once they dry, they can sort of create like a plastic coating. So these things blend together very, very well. Um, I'm just kind of cleaning my desk because it will be a bit more difficult to clean it off. Um, they blend together really well, but it's not the colours that blend. The product sort of blends. Um, and so I'm putting green and pink together. So I should be getting this horrible brown mud, but you can still see the brown and you can still see the pink. And what happens is they almost fight each other. It's a bit like when you use alcohol inks, but with alcohol inks, the colour that you put down last is the dominant colour. Whereas what you will find is the pink is pushing through to the green. So it's like your base colour is the one that will fight to be at the front. So although this is steampunk, I just really fancied going quite bright. Um, and the, the, the way that the products work together is it does almost give it, I hadn't intended to go everywhere, but it's, that's kind of what's happening, but I'm liking it. Um, the way that it's intended to work is as I said, they push through each other and what you'll find is as they dry, it forms different cells a little bit. I'm not quite liking how that's going, so I'm just going to pick that up a bit with the rag. It's a bit too heavy. That's it. I like that better now. Um, and it's almost like you get that acrylic pore look. Now, the one thing that Dina Wakely does say is you need to let it dry naturally. So I'm going to step away now um, from this and I will um, be back once that's dry and we will go on to decorating this just a little bit further. Okay, so that's all dry. I'm loving the colour on that. It's just a bit epic. It's not kind of how I expected it to be in my head but I absolutely, absolutely love it. Now I realise I forgot to expose some of the crackle gel um, and I've now sprayed it over with the um, what do you call it? The Dina Wakely sprays. So I might not be able to expose it as much because it's now got a bit of a plastic coating over it. But we will try. Because um, basically, yeah, that's kind of put the plastic coating over it. I'm just trying to see if there's any areas that the spray's not hit. I could lift it up. Oh, if I rub a bit harder, I can get it. So I don't know if you can see that now that. The crackle gel was yellow and um, the reason that you have to go on white is if you do this on top of black um, it's sort of like semi translucent so if you do it on top of black it just looks black so if you do it on white then it gives the true colour which is the yellow um, but then you kind of have to paint it over black um, to be able to get that crackle and as I said because of the fact that I ended up not thinking and exposing this first um, I've made it a bit more difficult because the Dina Wakely thing now has that plastic coating but I'm finding that if I push hard enough I am 
managing to expose little bits there so we can see there's little yellow bits there and we've got little purple bits there so that's bringing a purple so I might just try and get some of that but I'm um, not sure how much we'll get because I also don't want to brush so hard that I, I lose the the actual effect of the, the um, sprays either but I might just be able to I said we'll lift it a little bit and I don't know if you can see where I'm rubbing there there's a little bit of purple coming through and it's cool because you've got that colour and then that black crack right through it which just I think looks a little bit epic so we've got got a little bit and so I might just keep going with that see what I can lift off and then I'll be back so managed to lift a little bit of it you can just see it there it's popping through but I'll maybe do another project and show that off to a better uh, advantage as I said because the Dina Wakeley sprays are kind of like an acrylic plastic that is, we've now effectively got plastic over this and um, which is giving it a real cool look to be honest but uh, I just I'd forgot that I'd <laughs> done that quite frankly right so now I'm going to bring out some of this texture using um, my gold gilding wax and we're just gonna look at that the texture on that is epic I have to say I do love Lynette's stuff for mixed media she's just got some incredibly incredibly cool products that are just awesome so I'm gonna bling all of this up with a load of gold. I'm using the Pebble Gilding Wax so it covers really well. And the other thing about the Pebble Gilding Wax is it's actually furniture grade as well. Now I'm just going to try and give it a gentle rub on here because I want it to pick up some of the erased areas but I don't want to lose all of those cool colours that we've got going on but I do want to be able to see the texture. So. I find it hard to have a really delicate touch with this to be honest. I always think I'm going in delicately and then suddenly realise that I've covered everything. <laughs> okay, but it's looking good. It's all these layers to mixed media that really just bring, bring a project to life. Okay, let's get the edges. Just loving the colours in here. We've got turquoise, we've got green, we've got pink. It's so much fun. Maybe I should make another one of these hats again now, but um, gesso it white and then use the sprays because we'll get a real interesting colour mix going on, I think. Right. Let's do this. It's coming together. I love this. If you think about how random it looked at the beginning, it looks so ugly. You know, you just had different colours and just mixed media it just goes through this stage of it just looks incredibly awful <laughs> and then all of a sudden you know you bring it you pull it all together with color tones and then do something to bring out the texture and all of a sudden it just really comes to life getting in there let's get the ridges of that corrugated card I love this spray as I said because it's like an acrylic plastic it really suits this sort of project really really well it's, it's just got such a nice it's almost you know like in steampunk there's a lot of like leather and stuff like that it's almost given that sort of look to it that sort of leathery pleathery look <laughs> right I'm going to put quite a bit of gold on the edge of the table just to sort of emphasize that a bit I kind of want that quite a definite feature I'm going to put that on and then we'll pop a little bit down the sides there now there are little knobbly bits of the texture paste falling off but that's okay don't worry about it okay get this stuff right inside my nails and everything that's hilarious. Right, get all of that on there, like so. A bit of edge into the T 
teapot cup. Right, I think that's all that we've got this side to give a bit of attention to. Oh, I'm loving, love, love, love. I love the excitement when you work on a project and you kind of start off and especially when it does go through those um, ugly phases. I think even like when you're experienced at doing this sort of stuff that you do sort of have your <laughs> heart in your mouth at some points as well thinking oh my goodness. Um, and then when you just feel it all coming together like this it's just, just nothing better. Right I've got that because this is a furniture grade we can buff it up which is another thing I like about it because that looks amazing right now but see once we start getting in there and giving it a good polish it just lifts it to a whole other level and I'm having to go kind of canny on that gritty stuff but that's all right we have got so much going on so much color so much texture and yet it all works as well because we've got that overall metallic feel to it and the black so it's sort of like the black and the gold are connecting it all together so it works as one piece but we've also got so much going on so much to look at I think I may just be a tad in love with this project now, part of me almost doesn't want to put a character on it part of me I'm thinking that it would be cool just to leave it as it is I'm very, very tempted. We were supposed to be using GMC Designs images and part of me is wondering if that's laziness because I'd have to go and colour some. But I'm genuinely loving this the way it is right now. I've lost a little bit of that. The, um, it's just lifting a bit so I'm just going to get a bit more gold onto that and sort of stab it in. That seems the easiest solution because it's to hand. But I'll not buff that this time. Yeah, um, I am really, really tempted. Really tempted. Um, right, I'm just going to have a look through my bit box of JMC stuff um, just to see what sort of flowers and embellishments and bits. This is what I was trying to show you. Okay, so what I had planned to do on the hat was this technique here. So this is what I did I painted it all white. I then put the crackle gel on and then I rubbed it off the raised elements and that's the sort of effect that you get but it's just I forgot to do that. Right so um, let me just I'm going to rummage and then come back to you. Okay so yeah I think I'm going to go with keeping it simple. So I've just pulled out some of the little um, light bulbs that are in I think they're with Wilma Watts and then I've got the little bee and then these words and I think I'm just going to use it as that as finishing touches because actually I really really like it and I don't want to hide it with too much fussiness so I am just going to grab my blending mat which should be near me somewhere okay so I've got my blending mat I've got some antique linen distress ink and I'm just going to take that, she says, that's picking up blue, my antique linen's pretty much dry. Now let's get mm, quite tattered rose. And I need to get the, let's go with a different brush as well. Right, let's get some of that on. It's fine that it's picking up a bit of the blue because it sort of will add to that patina effect. <coughs> right going to wipe my ink pad because I had used that brush on oxide and then wiped onto this ink pad which is not really recommended. Alright, there we go. That one's a bit more truer to colour, that's fine. Right, so I'm going to get those and then what I'm going to do is um, let's, I'm going to knock back the bees as well so they're not as bright. Okay, I need a slightly darker colour for that one, so I'll try the brushed corduroy. I'm just knocking that back a little bit so it's not quite as bright. But I think I'll keep the butterfly as is. Okay. Right, um, I'm just going to also just get this and brush it. 
behind and I actually even let's go for it. Screw it up a little bit. While it's screwed up, I'm just gonna roll it. Okay. That looks kinda cool. Right, so let's do the same with the rest of those. And then what I was, I was, I was contemplating embossing it, but I'm wondering if that's, yeah, actually that could be enough. I was contemplating putting clear embossing powder over it and sort of embossing it. I'm just rolling it about. Because I'm going to get a more random effect doing it that way than sort of brushing over it after, I'd, after I've screwed it up, she says. <laughs> that one doesn't look that great at all. Right, let's do that and smudge it into there a little bit. Pick up some, it looks nice and oldie worldy. Right, and then this one here as well. Trying to get as much texture on this and again it's to suit the project because the really white stark words just probably wouldn't have really worked on this one quite so much. Let's just give that a little roll in the ink. Okay and see how that turns out. There we go. Okay so let's get this together. So we've got adventure, imagine. Where did the other one go? Honestly, I would lose my head if it wasn't screwed on. So I've managed to find that, honestly. I am at sixes and sevens. Right, let's get this glued down. I'm just using a, a little piece of gel medium and I'm just going to stick that stick that on like so and then I'm going to decorate with my bumblebees and light bulbs just to finish it off yeah I love this about creating it's like in my head you know um, I had some techniques I fancy trying but I so saw me finishing it off with some of my girls that's kind of how I've done all of them so far but it's just, just really liking the way it came together and didn't move move that one over actually just so it's a bit more right don't know how to straighten straighten that up a bit right okay I'm faffing, I'm faffing, but you may as well be happy as not. Right, so we've got that. And I thought we'll put some little light bulbs down here. And a little cluster of three. And I like, I know I've probably said it before, but I do like having bumblebees and steampunk, even though it's maybe not a common thing that you sort of get in general steampunk collections but to me steampunk is about believing in the impossible it was an era you know where people dreamed of flying they dreamed of traveling really fast they had all these wild ambitions and they achieved them like we we look at it now and just think of it as everyday stuff but at the time they were just considered a tad crazy you know their dreams were so big so it's like have big dreams, believe in your big dreams, go for your big dreams. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it's an era that proved that dreaming big works. So, um, yeah, and that's why. And then the other thing with bumblebees, uh, so this is the connection here, is that bumblebees um, should not be able to fly. Their little bodies are too fat and their wings are too small, um, but they still manage. And again, that's another thing of believe in the impossible. Right. I'm gonna try to. <laughs> I need to get it so it's got something to stick to. So I'm trying to 
place it so it will stick but also so it is aesthetically pleasing. Right, let's pop one up here as well. Up here. Right. And we'll get some bumblebees on the situation. One there, so we've sort of got a cluster of interest going on up there. And then I'll have one maybe flying in that direction as well. I quite like having them sort of flying in, you know, like different directions. And we'll put that one just there, like so. And then we've got our butterfly, which is just going to be the one pop of colour. So it should sort of stand out. And we'll maybe just pop her there. And then I think, apart from that bit that I'm going to have to move because it's just fallen, I think that might be us. So, I will just clear my desk so that we can see this in all its glory. Okay, so that is the hat all finished there. So, I have enjoyed that and yeah, very different. Very different to the other two that I've done as well because I have done a few. You know, if you look, that was the original steampunk. Actually, the colours turned out similar. So, I do fancy doing one. Oh, I've also gone the opposite. No, I've not. Um, the colours are quite similar. And I think that's possibly because I painted it black. So I do fancy maybe doing one again and painting it white. If that's something that you'd like to see, then let me know. Um, do head over to Dawn's channel because she will have rocked this as well. She is amazing at her mixed media. I can't wait to see hers. Hopefully I will be popping over there at six, but I will be down in Peterborough. So that will dependent, be dependent on uh, travel and yeah lots of different <laughs> lots of different things um so anyway if you have enjoyed it here please do consider liking and subscribing and i'll see you again very soon okay take care then and goodbye